Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you all. I hope that. Uh, oh, thanks. First of all, thank you so much for <laughs> showing up on a Friday evening. I'm sure you have lots of really nice Friday night plan. Uh, <laughs> although we're in pandemic, so you can't really go anywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, so I'm thankful that you're here. Uh, I think we can get started. And, uh, you know, if you are able to have your video on, that would be great to uh, just for us to feel uh, that sense of connection. But if it's because technology and whatnot, uh, don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, David, um, Dr. Gross, to start out with a word of prayer. And then, uh, and then I'll go ahead and share uh, and have conversation with you all. So, David. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for um, this, this good year that you've given us. And we pray that you'll, you'll make us grateful for everything, everything good in it. Um, we pray that you'll temper our, our frustration sometimes with the pace of the uh, pandemic uh, with, with hopefulness and with joy and just uh, keep us um, able to lead your, your little ones um, toward, toward maturity and toward um, lives that are full of service and full of joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just for the, uh, just in terms of organizing ourselves, um, I wanna uh, share a little bit about what's going on. Um, and there isn't a whole lot to, uh, specifically for, uh, for fourth and fifth grade, uh, you know, families, just because nothing is gonna, you know, change a whole lot. But I think as a courtesy to you all, I want to share just a little bit, just a tidbit of what is happening with the rest of the school, just so that, because, you know, you are you know, a major part of the community and I want you to be able to see sort of as a school, what, are we, what we're doing. Um, but specifically, you know, as you all have experienced that uh, fourth and fifth grade, have been able to enjoy more uh, on campus experience and uh, kids at this level are uh, like scientifically health wise at a lower risk. And, uh, and especially given all the risk mitigation uh, measures that we take. So I want to share a little bit of that. Uh, and, you know, and, and and after that, we'll just open for comments. And I, I do, one of the major uh, agenda or what we'd we'll love to be able to do is uh, get feedback from you as to how, uh, how things are going, uh, you know, for you, your family, for your kids and also how you feel about how things are going in terms of school and how we can continue to improve and, and continue to serve you well. Um, and we're here to listen. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to share with you a little bit. Uh, as far as the scheduling, well, let's, let me give, give you the public health update. Um, and, and obviously, uh, when uh, when we first, you know, all know about vaccine, availability of vaccine, that's a good news. It gives us a lot of hope. Uh, but right now, they rolled out the vaccine because, you know, there's a supply issue and uh, um, that, that, that it's been uh, slow in coming. Uh, and obviously, it should, you know, the, the vaccine, the first batch, should really go to those who are most in need and also those folks who are at the you know, the front line of the medical profession. So I know that on the screen, I know that we have some of you who already receive vaccine because of the profession. And, you know, that, that is really, really important. Um, as far as uh, for California teachers are concerned, we're in tier 1B. And so right now, I know that as of today, uh, Alameda County announced that, uh, 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 you know, teachers are going to, uh, be scheduled in to receive vaccine on Monday, starting on Monday. But that's Alameda County. Uh, as far as I know, 
uh, Cimitale. That hasn't happened to Cimitale County. Uh, but even with the uh, that schedule of rolling out vaccine, uh, again, is driven by supply. So it may take quite a bit of time for that vaccine to be fully available for teachers. Um, we are definitely praying that vaccines will be available for teachers soon and and uh, and that way we will have a higher degree of confidence uh, to do more uh, with your kids. Uh, so that that's really the context. Um, uh, as far as the in terms of regulations, uh, we're fortunate that our plan was uh, was being heavily vetted by the Cemetery County, uh, being approved by the county back in October. We were being able to have been able to operate in our way in a in a uh, division specific way. Um, and is tied to the color tier of the county. And there's been some changes in the imposition of regulation from the state of California, but because our plan has been well vetted, uh, that we can, we're, we have been able to continue to operate within that plan. So I just want to let you know that everything that we do uh, is in full compliance and it's you know, and, and there's accountability that's uh, placed on us. And so I want you to be fully be rest assured that uh, things are done in the right way. Um, uh, there, there are a few other things that doesn't really fully pretend to the fourth and fifth grade, but does uh, uh, affect the middle school and high school. Simply uh, on several things, there's a greater emphasis on on healthy building, for example, the ventilation system, uh, we have paid, we have been paying great attention to that uh, policy, um, risk mitigation procedures. Uh, we have been doing that. Uh, there's some some adjustment in terms of the definition of stable groups. Uh, so we're we're making those adjustments accordingly for other grade levels, but not for fourth and fifth grades because. Um, you know, we, we're somewhat of a smaller class, you know, these are smaller classes, so we, and we have, you know, large enough spacing um, in the classroom, so that's totally fine at the moment. Um, so, as, as far as uh, we are, as far as uh, what we are doing right now, nothing is really changing for uh, the fourth and fifth grade, as you can see. We we'll continue to operate three days a week on campus. Uh, I would, I, I can anticipate some of you may be asking me the question: When can we add another day uh, on campus? And a uh, simple answer is this: Is that when our county uh, tier color tier goes from purple to red, goes from purple to red and we stay in red for two weeks, then we can add another day. So that's the, that is a uh, county approved plan that we must comply and follow. So you can pay attention to that as soon as, you know, the county announces that now we're right here, you know, then the clock starts ticking two weeks from that, we will add another day. Uh, for the students on, on campus. Uh, and and uh, starting right after winter break, uh, we're going to add, a, you know, we're basically going to operate a day and a half on campus for middle school and one full day uh, for high school on campus. And we're going to, at the midpoint uh, between the February break and spring break, we're going to do we're going to reevaluate and see if we are able to add additional day uh, to those divisions. Um, I do want to just go quickly into some consideration uh, and and obviously just this is the review and highlight and um, you know our plan continue to be flexible, knowing that if at any point you want your 
kids to stay virtual, uh, you know, you can continue to do so and still be part of the learning process. Um, and we want to be adaptive uh, in adjusting ourselves according to the regulation changes or the public health condition changes, uh, so on. Um, we also do want to re-emphasize or uh, kind of help, and this is continuing to be the feedback from parents and we're listening. Uh, we, uh, you know, I have continued to, well, in fact, there's a uh, refresh, re re uh, refreshing of a messaging to, to faculty uh, and the divisional leaders that we must pay uh, uh, attention to the social emotional health and also the physical health of our students. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, 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 you know, kind of go back and say, oh, how are we doing in those areas and what other things can we do to improve on that? Um, on campus lunches, uh, will be available, and I'm, I'm not sure, David. Right now, do we lunches? Uh, what's the how are we operating in terms of school lunches on campus? Oh, we're doing a, we do a pizza day and a happy meal day, so right, not the okay. best nutrition, but good, uh, good, easy logistics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so right now, uh, what I want to, so in addition to that, I want to say let you know that uh, for elementary school on Thursday, uh, your lunch school will cover your kids lunch. Uh, that means you don't need to bring money. You don't need to, you know, just pre-order. We'll take care of it. So every Thursday, the lunch is on us. Uh, our, our chef in resident will prepare the food. Uh, and in fact, on Thursday, they will prepare food for middle school and uh, elementary school. So, uh, so on Thursday, don't worry and, uh, just send them over here and we'll take care of everything. Uh, so that's, that's the, uh, hopefully that's a, <laughs> you know, that's a happy news. Um, and, uh, I do want to continue to emphasize about parent, uh, response. Go ahead, David. Oh, just a quick question on that. Uh, do parents still need to, to place order on, uh, using the app? Uh, so, yes, that, that, yeah, that's right. Yes. And yeah. I think Vince uh, can speak to that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, you guys are actually the experts on campus for uh, <laughs> the easy app um, lunch ordering system. Um, so uh, I believe we're going to start that though after the winter break. So next week, uh, since it's a short week, we won't be doing the, the free lunch that day on uh, the 11th, but we'll start on the uh, 25th uh, will be the free lunches from when they start. Um, so, but you'll still use the uh, easy app. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So starting from that, and and we'll go through the rest of the year. Um, and anyway, so now I want to just kind of talk about parental responsibilities, and you know, obviously, uh, I I I implore the parents of middle school and high school kids uh, to do more of that in because, you know, and, and for them, uh, messaging is important and students will take on more of the responsibility. At the fourth and fifth grade level, you know, it, it, is, it is good to reinforce good, healthy public health message. Uh, so I think do that at home, uh, even in terms of your own social practices, uh, uh, how you are um, creating a stable group, whether it is with relatives or close family, friends, well, no, just, just uh, you know, we, we ask you to uh, to be conscientious of that. And also, uh, you know, your plan on doing the school breaks, you know, whether it is uh, limiting travel, uh, you know, staying put, uh, do know that uh, uh, we still are going to trust you and trust, you know, you responding to the, to the daily health screening app uh, and we will red flag folks who travel. Uh, you know, we we want to make sure that uh, we can, you know, the the community is 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 uh, is safe. Um, again, you know, I I do want to say um, a privilege of being able to be on campus. Uh, that that privilege is fragile. You know, uh, uh, Monte Vista Christian School in Watsonville 
uh, in Santa Cruz. Uh, the head of school is a close friend of mine. Uh, this week he had to close the middle school down for two weeks because several kids uh, had COVID. Um, and and so so you know you, you know that and that's that's affecting everybody. So we we want to make sure we do our part. You know, not something like the same thing for students. And we will reinforce that uh, at school uh, to make sure that they uh, uh, are learning how to be aware of their surrounding, uh, be conscientious about uh, physical distancing. And and we're gonna we're gonna make sure we do that. Um, lastly, just to say that uh, this is a long marathon, right? Uh, uh, I some of you have heard me sh share this before, but I used to run marathons, and I remember the first time running the San Diego Marathon at mile twenty, uh, right, twenty six point two miles. But at mile twenty, after you run twenty miles, uh, you know, I just feel like I couldn't. And do take another step. I hit a wall. I just I just want to stop, uh, you know. And you're thinking six point two miles more is is a piece of cake uh, after you run twenty miles, but it just it's just so hard. But you also know that mentally, like if you like you know that if you just slow down or stop, you just won't be able to pick up your feet again. Yeah. Uh, so so it's a lot of sort of willpower to kind of push through the wall. We're at the 20 mile mark of the of the pandemic, so to speak, I think. Uh, mentally we're exhausted, emotionally we're exhausted. Uh, socially we're we are uh, we 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 long uh, to connect with one another. Uh, but I just ask that all of us keep keep at it, you know, uh, let's lean on one another, encourage one another to get through this time. Um, so that's uh that's you know really the all I have in terms of giving you the update. I, I think it's important that you know the big picture of what the school is dealing with, even though it doesn't. Uh, there isn't any specific changes on the fourth and fifth grade level per se, but for you to kind of look forward to that, to you know as the health condition improves, and we hope that it will improve, um, then we. You know that we, as a school, we had a commitment to safely open up the school more and more and more and, and bring back to uh, some semblance of normalcy. Uh, always to say, I can't wait. I just can't wait uh, the day when we can, <laughs> you know, all get back and feel a, a great degree of safety and, and health. And that, and, and, and I promise you, uh, as a school, we're going to, Let's do a big party for everybody. <laughs> We're gonna do a big celebration uh, to celebrate uh, this community. So, uh, any comments, uh, questions, or anything that uh, David or Vince would like to add? Um, I just want to say thank you for everything. I think we're very, very yeah. thankful that the kids are going three times to school. Um, it's been great. They love it. And Hanan needs to be there eight, eight or five. He's late, even though he could be later. Like they really enjoy being there. Uh, my question is when middle school start going to ca on campus on Thursday, will the little ones continue going to the gym and have lunch in the other campus or they will stay in elementary school? Uh, we, we are going to, I believe at the moment, we're still working out the specifics of the schedule uh, because uh, uh, right now we're putting all these pieces together, especially, you know, high school and middle school and fourth and fifth. So we're trying to figure out the specifics of the, um, uh, of the scheduling. Uh, the, the, the approach would be to stagger, um, you know, to stagger the the time and the usage of different spaces to see if we can make it happen. Um, I don't know, David and Vince, have you already had conversation? I, I believe I'm I'm sure you already had conversation with with Miss Ayers, uh, really talking I'm pretty, through that. I'm pretty sure that we're going to stay at the elementary school on Thursday. Okay. Uh, it just it just solves a bunch of challenges. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Okay. It's and easier, yeah. easier to move the food than the than the people, and then have two different lunch areas and all that. And if an additional day is added, do you know at this point whether it would be Monday or Wednesday, or is that still to be determined? That's to be determined, at least from my perspective. But I would uh, would be happy to kind of get a straw poll mm -hmm. or some sense of what people prefer, because to us is kind of like I mean we can look at it from the school perspective in terms of facility, but as far as you know, you know what uh, what what the, right now, in in some sense, uh, we we was kind of steer away from the from Monday, uh, because right now, um, and, and this is not a set plan, uh, obviously. And I'm just really kind of, uh, you know, without a without a specifics, I, I'm looking at the different cons con consideration. High schools are going to be on campus on Monday. And there are a lot of them, right? <laughs> so we were hoping that we can spread them out, right? So some are actually going to be at the Seville campus, and some are going to be in Lindemar campus. And we are using, you know, as far as we're able to use more of the outdoor area. And that's that's the that's one of the reason we instead of putting, uh, you know, and the high school teachers have been advocating having high school on campus day on the Wednesday when we say uh, we really can't do that because we we want to also accommodate middle school and, and so we put it on the Monday and so right now fourth and fifth grade uh, you know so right now I would assume that if we add another day it'll probably not be on the Monday to be you know so that it won't be in a con in conflict with the high school uh, so that that's that's my my hunch right now, but obviously I'll, we will let you uh, we'll let you know, and and the comment coming through you yes yes you're right Wednesday is a short day, so we will take that into consideration as we plan it out and see. Uh, no promises made yet. This is just brainstorming at the moment. Other other questions or comments? Okay, so we have a chat coming through. From perspective of a parent with kids in all division having start time days that don't require multiple trips. Yeah, absolutely. No, we we're <laughs> we're we we are aware of that. Uh, definitely. Uh, so. As at the moment, um, I mean, Vince and David, do you see at the moment, based on our current plan, is there would would this pose some challenges? Are you asking specifically on the Monday versus Wednesday issue, or? Uh, well, I suppose, uh, yeah, I, I guess this is the challenge right now. Or I mean, the current current thinking right now would be able to. You know the the way the logic the the way we uh, we think about the plan is because fourth and fifth grade have been on campus for multiple days and it is operating at the maximum of our our what the our uh, county approved plan allows. Uh, so then the next emphasis becomes well how can we open up the middle school and high school more, uh, and so when we do that. Um, we're not necessarily thinking about parents dropping off kids in multiple division, but rather, or, well, we, we think about that uh, slightly at the at the lower priority, but the highest priority would be how can we maximize our physical uh, space and facilities uh, so that it can be, students can be on campus uh, with the safest arrangement. Does that make sense? You know, so so that that's one of the reasons why we say okay. So on the on the elementary is off day, we bring the we bring the uh, the the middle school back, but then middle school wants another day, so then we put it on the on the Thursday, 
uh, instead of Monday because we want to give the Monday to the high schoolers. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like this jigsaw puzzle that we're trying to figure it out. Uh, so another point is that the um, the county basically is uh, making it up. The highest priority is the uh, stable groups. So in order to uh, um, ensure the groups are stable, which also now means the teachers have to go with the same group. So we don't have as much flexibility. So, but uh, but um, some of the administrative staff are always mentioning, all right, what about the parents with multiple children or children within multiple divisions? How can we best also accommodate or figure out uh, how to help them? So uh, you're in our discussions, uh, families with multiple uh, children or children in multiple divisions. Uh, but as uh, Dr. Chen said, uh, we are trying to figure out how can we keep the group stable uh, and get them on campus as much as possible. With the high school being the most complicated in scheduling, that's why they, they're kind of monopolizing the campus as much as uh, on that day. But because essentially they can only come on campus probably once a week uh, for a while because they have the most complicated schedule. Um, middle school um, is more similar to the elementary school and that uh, it's easier to keep a stable group. So we can probably overlap a little bit more there. Um, but um, those of you with that span multiple divisions, you, your job is uh, even more complicated. <laughs> so thank you for your patience with us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Other questions or comments or feedback on how what we can do better? Well, and just it also affects like staffing. Um, in interesting ways, like um, we've had a teacher teaching Amer American Sign Language because with the middle school, she's only been teaching online. But now with middle school coming in one day a week, uh, she'll have to teach. If she teaches any more sign language, she'll have to be online with the elementary kids. So we have to juggle that kind of thing as well. And we're trying to figure out like with people like me, um, can I be, can it be considered a stable cohort if I do only outdoor activities with middle and high school and and outdoor activities with elementary because the inside outside rules are different also. So anyway, it's kind of a, it's a little bit tricky. We, Vince and I were both trying to parse some public health language this morning and ended up concluding that we're really not supposed to be using the gym yet. Um, so I, anyway, Basketball in the gym was fun while it lasted. Now we need we need public health to get better before we're <laughs> back back in that. So um, yeah, yeah, and we, we're we're careful in parsing out these languages because if we uh, oh by the way uh, I do want to let you know uh, one major huge change uh, is that uh, county and state has now uh, institute a COVID police. Uh, COVID, basically COVID violation hotline uh, that anybody can call and report uh, any violations. So if if we are caught in any violations, we can be in at risk of losing uh, our ability to operate within our approved plan. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we become so careful. We're parsing out the language. Uh, so gym use, for example, gym as a building uh, can be used because it's safe and big and has good ventilation, uh, can be used for educational activities, but not any activities related to like what you would associate as gym usage. You see, so game, ba basketball games or workout or this and that. So. Uh, I, th I but, think I think I'd be allowed to let the kids do exercises standing six feet apart. Yes, yes, but you can do that. Like, yes. When the weather's good, what's the point? Let's <laughs> yeah. outside and give them a little freedom. Um, anyway, I keep saying this over and over the last year, but it is what it is. Okay, let's you know whatever. Might as well not bang our head on the wall. Just try to work with it and make the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, a question coming back, uh, coming over here, Anita sent a question about what about some other schools are able to operate more fully than the other? 
And I think it, 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 here is a, probably a simple, quite a simple way to explain it. Uh, I think in the initial stage when everybody was uh, given the opportunity to submit plans, there isn't any sort of standard of comparison, if you will, as to what kind of plan is going to get approved and what kind of plan is going to get rejected, right? And so we we had done our due diligence reading all the, reading up on all the guide, guidelines and regulations, and we came up with a plan uh, that is associated with color code, and we have uh, what we have written in to the plan, uh, which it says at the most restricted tier in purple, we can only do this, but when we get down to the red and an orange and all that, then, and in fact, we, we thought that we were quite a lot more liberal in the sense that we say, you know, as long as we get to red, <laughs> we can have four, four days. Uh, we thought that that was uh, a progressive enough to do that. Uh, and obviously, probably there are some schools that they get their five day on campus plan approved, even at the most restricted tier. Uh, it, it's possible. I don't know because I don't know which school and I haven't, you know, read their plan. And so it's, it's a plan is specifically tied to the school and the plan has to do with the specific context of the school, such as the facility, you know, the outdoor spacing that they get to have. You know, so every school is so every school is different. So, oh, I'm hearing some. Yeah, so every school is different, and that, that's the that's the reason. It would it would be much simpler for us if it, if we were either kindergarten to eighth grade or high school. Um, right, it's, it's a little more challenging sharing the campus with the three divisions so yeah and, and i think the county look at schools like us as a, as a with a greater degree of uh, scrutiny uh, because um you know it's more complex without context you know um well, thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for the comments. Appreciate the encouragement. Um, yeah, we we are we're <laughs> we're putting a lot of thoughts into this. I I think right now, uh, Vince and I were just talking about how uh, uh, our our leadership team we sort of <laughs> have been live living and breathing uh, COVID policy, <laughs> you know and. And and sometimes we caught ourselves taking it for granted, uh, and forget that say even our teachers may not live and breathe these kind of specifics of COVID policies, and and we had to do a better job communicating to to teachers, and also do a better job communicating to to parents like you, right, to be able to help you understand what we're seeing, and so this is a good opportunity for you to kind of share how we process and how we arise in decisions. And we don't just arbitrarily come up with a decision. We, we think through every possibilities. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, we, so you know, you know, again, be patient with us. And uh, if, we, if you see any shortcoming, let us know. Uh, we, we wanna improve on that. I want to say thank you so much for the fantastic work that you guys are doing. Uh, Dr. Gross here and, and all the teachers. Um, I know it's you, know, you guys are in a very difficult uh, position and you're doing just phenomenal. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, for the kind words. Uh, and you know, credit to uh, a lot to teachers. They're, you know, they're the one that the, doing this, you know, they're, they're caring for your, your, your children and, and, and educating them at the same time and keeping them safe. Uh, and Dr. Gross, you know, on campus every day to, to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So we credit to all of them. Yeah.
I just think we have to think about how resilient our kids are, are becoming with all of this. Uh, we did to, do it today during a, our dinner conversation, it was about like, well, we cannot go to the gym anymore. It's, uh, it's not COVID friendly, but hey, guess what? We're gonna start soccer next week. Uh, so it's just yeah. great to see how our kids are adapting and learning from all of you guys. So they just see the right attitude from all of you. And that's, I think is the best uh, learning out of all this COVID. Um, yeah. So being flexible and resilient and, and just going with whatever we are thrown at, right? That we're making the best out of it and still being safe. So I am I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we were trying to <laughs> make a lemonade out of the lemon, right? And uh, uh, another another good positive development for our school is uh, during the winter break, we uh, we are going to be, I think we rented the bulldozer. <laughs> we're gonna actually uh, on the on the Seville campus, and behind the the school building, the hillside, uh, we're actually gonna create uh, the the fire trail, uh, the, the safety fire trail, and, and that's gonna uh, also have a multi-purpose of becoming a hiking and running trail for for the students. So I think that, that will be a good development. Uh, I think eventually we can host uh, cross country over there as well, cross country meet over there. So I think David's probably gonna be driving some big machinery. <laughs> He's excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> that little orange tractor that we already own is uh, is exciting up there on the hill. So it'll be good to have something a little lower and heavier. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm, I just thank you, Florencia, for bringing that up because I totally forgot to order the marking paint that I need in order to do soccer on Tuesday. <laughs> I heard about the I've heard about the paint, and he mentioned that too. He said only if we get the paint. <laughs> so, oh yeah, there's he other mentioned ways, the paint. <laughs> other ways to do lines, but yeah, I, I want to try to get at least a rectangle by Tuesday, <laughs> or else it's just chaos. But I don't know. You know, I, I've done some um, I've done some service projects in northern Mexico, and the kids play soccer everywhere. I mean, everywhere, and no complaints. Just you just work with it and you have fun. But uh, <laughs> I'm a I don't know how to I don't know how to not be the PE teacher teaching the lines and the you know you do it correctly thing. So anyway. Yeah. Don't Excellent. forget, don't forget Pelé, which is the king of the best soccer player in the world, learned how to play soccer with a manga. So that's how, wow. he, that's how he learned to play soccer. So I think uh, we don't need that many lines. But I think that the joy of, of, of all of this very hard time is just like learning about like how easy it is to get pleased with easy things. Like uh, I always ask the kids like how is cool and I don't learn much about like what they learn in math but it's always like the hike with Dr. Gross and the essay is like we went for a hike with Dr. Gross and he let us pick any kind of sticks that we wanted and uh, I was like okay well what was his role in the hike it's like he was going up for things that were coming our way like pointing at like the the sour patch and things like that it's like that is wonderful you know it's like these are the little things that uh that now our kids are more aware that they couldn't yeah. do all those hikes for such a long time and they were missing them and now they can do it again so just you know, know that uh this is a, a work of love what you guys are doing the fourth graders actually dug up an antique uh sarah uh, let's see i don't know if her parents are on the call but anyway uh sarah noticed a little glass on the in the trail and they all started getting sticks and digging it out and it's a it's a bottle from the 1920s and it's no kidding yeah and it's completely intact uh, okay. you look at look it up you can see it on e they got these things on ebay uh nehi uh, soda Nehi. and they say that they're gonna sell it and alejandro was saying no 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 you should keep it a few years more and then you're gonna get more money don't sell it yet. <laughs> like google we dug it we dug it up washed it off and read the read the label and i I, I Googled it and it came up right away. I'm like, this is from the 1920s and it's for sale on eBay. And they all started picturing these huge amounts of money. And it's like, 
actually well done. <laughs> some, of ones, some of the ones on eBay are like 99 cents. So I didn't tell them that, but I saw one right. as high as ten dollars for a really good, <laughs> really good condition. But um, I, it maybe should just be a nice vase in somebody's window. But um, <laughs> but it's I, it's a very interesting property. There's like um, I'm hoping we can do a, a project this year also where we do like a identification or reclamation kind of of uh, coastal live oak trees because that's the tree that ought to be growing on the hill, but the eucalyptus all took over. But because we've started clearing around the edges, we've got oak sprouts, like four to six feet tall, sometimes a little smaller on a lot of the edges. And so I'm, I hope we can have the students start tagging those trees, measuring them, and then creating space around them. And we can see that kind of recovery. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing, this property is an amazing, um, amazing opportunity for all kinds of discovery education. That's great. It's the first time I hear that we students I got a hundred year old bottle. <laughs> yeah, I well it's the first time it's happened. It just it, this is great <laughs> news. It's yesterday, yesterday at 2 30 on the fourth grade hike. So, <laughs> but that's an example like of again the campus is so nice because yesterday was high school outdoor ed but there is still plenty of space to do activities with fourth and fifth grade. So yeah, um, it's okay. I mean, it's a little bit, if the weather was bad, it'd be tougher um, cause it'd be kind of slippery up on those trails, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. How, how are you all, your, all of you uh, just dealing with all, all this? I mean, are you guys okay? Is there, are there, Things that we can, as a school, we can keep you in our prayers. Or is this just something that we're all in the same boat? <laughs> we all kind of deal with the same thing. Uh, I do. I do want to appreciate. Uh, it's, you know, especially Anita is here. You know, she's leading the effort and uh, charge on parent in prayers and you know I, I haven't been able to have opportunity to make it much but I just knowing that you guys are praying for the school um, it really brings a tremendous level of comfort so thank you so much um, so question I, I have a question coming to you uh, looking long term do we envision keeping current fifth graders on Seville campus? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, let, me, let me see how I answer this, this way. Um, we, we haven't, I haven't have, a, have any thought of moving fifth grade <laughs> elsewhere. That's, you know, that's, that's just the honest truth. Uh, and so that that's sort of where I I am at because I think uh, Lindemar campus at the moment is at operating at a maximum capacity. So uh, so I'm not sure it makes more any sense to bring next year to bring fifth grade over. Uh, but at the same time, you know there might be other factors that may emerge. You know we may be thinking about you know, different things. Um, if the sixth grade next year only has one section, then that means uh, some spacing will open up over there. And is it better to keep it together? Is You know, that that's subject for discussion and debate. But at the moment, we're not, we're not looking at changing that much at, at, at the moment, so. So that that's that's where I, where I stand right now. Um, there there is uh, you know in terms of long range and you know obviously you know our desire is that you will continue to trust uh, the school, entrusting your children to our school uh, in the long term, and we want to be able to retain you for as long as we're able to, right? And so 
for you to kind of look forward to the future is that uh, as the school becoming fully uh, middle and high, um, then what that means is that the Seville campus uh, can get repurposed and and creating a, a, a lot of opportunities, right? And so whether it is a wonderful uh, art studio, we're looking out the ocean, <laughs> big space, you know, uh, right? Uh, I know Annie Patel, you were, <laughs> you were like, ah, <laughs> right? Uh, and, 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 you know, and, or uh, a space that is good for like maker space, right? Where you have 3D printer, you have laser cutter, you have, you know, you have robotic, you have, you know, all that stuff that, you know, and the, the, the top, the top we can even like convert into a observatory so we can have astronomy and, you know, and so I had, you know, I, I, you know, this is what I think about at night. <laughs> it's just like, how do I dream about, you know, big ideas for school uh, and opportunity for our school. Uh, you know, who knows who can put satellites in, you know, the, the, the receptor, you know, and collaborate with Valley Christian San Jose to be part of the uh, International Space Station uh, uh, program. Uh, these kind of things, because of the available space that we have, we get to be able to do that. Uh, you know, and so there, there are different way of we can reimagine and I would love for, uh, you know, especially, you know, interested parents to, you know, be able to come alongside of us to re-envision and imagine. So, so I, you know, I'll, I'll solicit your input uh, as we move move forward and have more resources and, and be able to do that. But that's something to look forward to. I mean, the, you know, we, we are sad to uh, phase out of the, uh, the elementary school. On the other hand, the flip side of it is that it opens up opportunities with that spacing that will add value to, especially for your children as they, you know, go from grade to grade. Uh, other comments or questions? I know it's Friday night, so I don't want to keep you too long, uh, but I'm, you know, if you don't have any sort of other urgent comments uh, and uh, you know if you don't have any we, we can end we can end our time here so you can get back to your family uh, enjoy your Friday night uh, but again uh, you know even as we close uh, you know that uh, the communication channel is open you can always feel free to connect with any of us, one of us and we're here to to listen and to uh to partner with you um oh uh i think anita has another question um will pat bay offer a summer program to the incoming fifth graders uh, i'm gonna love that question to vince i think he uh, knows yes. that it's coming <laughs> uh we are um in discussion and, and getting ready to um uh, start planning for the summer program. So yes, there will be a summer program uh, for um, pretty sure fifth grade all the way through, um, um, whether it be to um, enrichment to get ahead or to uh, uh, to support our community and help uh, students that may have some gaps to provide services there. Um, also just to have some fun, um, fun topics just to explore and continue uh, uh, growing that uh, desire to learn and, and so that we're looking at um, announcing that soon. So uh, be on the lookout over the next month, probably you'll uh, get some more information about uh, summer program. Yeah, and you know, uh, and again, internal our internal goal is to get some information out uh, after the February break. Um, you know, and and that that's the internal goal. We we we're gonna take this this coming week to to have more conversation. We need to. We need to be looking at uh, uh, teachers who are available to to teach, and in, at the moment we are trying to 
uh, gauge, uh, you know, teacher's intent. And so, uh, so that, that, that's why the, the time, the process, you know, uh, but as far as the vision and the plan, the answer is yes, uh, we want to offer some of the program. Well, um, I think I'm going to let you go and enjoy your, your family. And uh, thank you so much once again for uh, joining us in your busy schedule and precious time with your family. Uh, I hope this is helpful uh, and useful, and but also just a sense of that we're in this together. Uh, it, it is really, really important, and we're 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 part of a community together, and uh, we're doing this together. So thank you so much. God bless. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody.